undergoing a revolution using AI to actually conduct these tests. Biotech stocks are set to soar as FDA changes become a reality. You shrink that time, what happens is you see an explosion of new treatments. Dylan Jovenet with Behind the Market shares a list of four biotech companies. Some of the drugs they're working on is so exciting that NVIDIA bought uh, 7 million shares of the stock. All on the verge of big breakthroughs that could be worth billions. They're this close to the end of the finish line. It's a 5, 10, 20 billion dollar a year drug. While pharmaceutical plays are often a long shot. We've got 2.8 million people paying $84 a month. I mean, it's Netflix on steroids. These four companies are some of the best options to place your biotech bet. Let's dive in. Dylan, so great to have you back on the channel. We always love sharing some of your expertise with our investors. We're going to dive into a really interesting sector today, and that is biotech. There have been a lot of headlines and a lot of moves in many of these stocks in just the last week or so. What's going on in this industry? Well, thanks for having me, Bridget. It's always a pleasure to be on with you. Uh, I'll tell you, biotech is, is uh, the drug industry in general is trading at valuations that we haven't seen in a very, very, very long time. It's as cheap as it has ever been. It's really incredible. And I think a lot that was driving that was the Trump administrations. There, people were concerned about how this was all going to play out. Is President Trump going to cut drug prices? You know, we've seen kind of executive orders designed to talk about that. But I think there's a very, very big story happening underneath as it becomes more clear what's happening. And as RFK Jr. takes further control of HHS, and that is basically what we're doing is we're undergoing a revolution in how we're starting to identify drugs, target drugs, create drugs, and also treat disease. And I think that is the cornerstone of the Make America Healthy Again policy. Uh, and it's really starting to show up in some of these stocks. Yeah, I think some of the larger pharmaceutical companies have had more of the hits, like you talked about. Their, their prices are a little bit lower than they have. I think Eli Lilly had a, a rough time after earnings last yeah. week. But there are other companies in biotech mm. that are really seeing some positive gains. And you have a list today of four biotech companies that are really set for a strong future ahead. So why don't we start with that first company and what's driving some of the success behind it? Well, you know, and I have some notes here. I'm going to refer to my notes, but Summit, Summit Therapeutics, key true to right now is the biggest drug in the world. It's it redefined Blockbuster for all drugs. And, you know, right now, Merck sells at 40% of Merck's revenue comes from this one drug. But Merck has a problem. Keytruda gets off patent in 2028. So basically, for years, there have been other companies, Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Glaxo, all these other companies that have been trying to knock Keytruda off. And finally, there's a small biotech that actually has a drug in phase three trials that has performance better than Keytruda. It's really unbelievable, unprecedented. The first people to do this, and that stock is trading in the 20s, 22 bucks a share, Summit Therapeutics. These guys are no joke. So this company, if you're, if you're Pfizer or Glaxo or M another company, you're saying to yourself, gosh, we've been watching Merck make $25 billion a year off of this. Hmm, we haven't been able to get into this space. How do we get into this space? The easiest way for them to do it is to buy a company like Summit, just like that. And takeovers like this, you know, are done, generally speaking, could be done at two to two and a half to three times the price of the stock, which would be between 40 and $60 a share. And, and the stock is trading at twenty two ninety nine or 23 bucks a share now. It's a very compelling opportunity, really is. Yeah, for those investors who have not heard of Keytruda, this is a, a huge drug in the cancer field. We've talked about it once before on this channel. I want you to talk a little bit more, Dylan, about how the discovery of just one drug, one really successful uh, breakthrough research and, and new development in, in pharmaceuticals can really change a company's future. Like you said, like the potential for Summit to get bought out. I think that one discovery can make all of the difference for these companies. I couldn't agree more. I mean, at the end of the day, what we're trying to do is we're trying to invest in the best science we can. Uh, 
You know, if you're if you're focused on good science, all the other things happen. I came on your channel a couple of years back before these GLP-1 drugs uh, like Ozempic were even out there really in the public. And I was talking about Novo and Eli Lilly, and those stocks have done fabulous. You know, big, e even big companies move with big, when they discover a very, very big drug. So this is a game changer. Lilly was a double since we talked about it. Same with Novo when I first came on here. But the smaller biotechs are more exciting for us. And we've, uh, you know, over the years developed a specialty in oncology. And, uh, you know, we've all had friends and family members uh, get hit with cancer. Uh, you know, as a matter of fact, a, a dear buddy of mine uh, has uh, cancer right now, and he's using Keytruda, and it's saving his life. It's extending his, his life. So it's, it's really, but it's the personal, you know, at a very young age, I saw this up close and personal. So I've always been interested in cancer uh, drugs and biotechs that focus on that. And that is a massive, massive business. And we've had our biggest winners at Biotech Insider and our company have all been cancer companies, you know, uh, Immunogen up 463%, you know, Chemocentrics up 300%. So you get really different big spikes in prices when one of these companies brings a drug across the finish line. And right now with Summit, they're this close to the end of the finish line. Very, very important. Very important. If they don't even get acquired, if they just get FDA approval, and they partner with a big pharma drug. This is a multi, it's a five, ten, twenty billion dollar a year drug. It's astonishing. It's such an interesting first pick with a lot of potential. Thank you for that one, Dylan. Let's move on to the second biotech company that you're looking at right now. The, the second one is remember we talked about RFK, you know, and you know what RFK has done is he's publicly said he wants to get rid of animal testing in FDA trials to get a drug into human trials. It gets tested on animals first. That is a very slow process. Well, RFK Jr., one of the big advancements he's talking about is using AI to actually conduct these tests. Why, you know, why do them on animals? It's slow, it, whether it's harmful to the animal, obviously, but, you know, it's also just a heck of a lot faster to use, to have these computers basically uh, run simulations on all these molecules. It's going to get you where you want to be a lot faster. And, you know, the number one company for that, in my view, is Schrodinger, S-D-G-R. Uh, this is a company that Bill Gates owns 10% of, that really has agreements with a lot of big pharma companies. This is acting like the research arm, the AI research arm for a lot of big pharma companies out there right now. So, you know, this is a company, again, that is one of the great long-term buys, without a doubt, uh, that, that, that we have. And as RFK's policy begins to get implemented, who is he going to turn to? He's going to turn to a Schrodinger, which is like the biggest company that does this. And he's going to, you know, force Big Pharma to work with this company. It's going to be like government-mandated contra uh, contracts with these guys. Yeah, that's where the real potential is with the future of AI is these companies that have learned how to harness it for real practical uses. And one of the most practical uses, like you said, is this research is getting large amounts of data done in a very small amount of time. I know you take a much closer look at these companies and which ones have the biggest potential to profit from the use of AI in healthcare in your latest special report on the AI company that's revolutionizing medicine. You can scan the QR code right now or click the link in the description of this video to go to Dylan's full report and take a much deeper dive into the growth potential AI is adding to the biotech field. Uh, Dylan, I want to move on to your third pick, which is also related to AI research. Now, this is a very, very interesting company. You get the smartest scientists and AI re computational researchers, basically, from a couple different companies, and you put them together and you get recursion. Some of the drugs they're working on is so exciting that NVIDIA bought uh, 7 million shares of the stock. So NVIDIA has backed this company. These are the two, Schrodinger and Recursion are the two. It's a two-way race between those two companies. One's backed by Bill Gates. One is backed by NVIDIA. So very, very exciting stuff there. One of the things I remember reading Henry Kissinger and Eric uh, Schmidt, the, the former CEO of Google, wrote a book. They talked about the power of AI, the coming power of AI, about three years ago, before Kissinger died. And he said that AI invented a chess move that 
no human had ever contemplated in history. Very, very big. They're looking at things differently than us. And I remember reading an article a couple of years ago that AI found a, you know, a cure, quote unquote cure, for childhood brain cancer in 30 days. It found a cure for another type of cancer in like 24 hours. What they were doing is they were running, and I say cure very loosely, okay? What they think they're doing is they're running these simulations. You see, we have a lot of drugs that might attack the cancer, for example, but a lot of problem is getting them attached to the disease, getting them attached to the part of the body. So these AIs run simulations about molecules that'll actually attach the drug to you know, the defunct cell that's replicating itself or whatever it is. So they were able to run countless simulations and come up with ways to attach these drugs that work properly to the cells that are really bad actors in the body, which humans had not even thought of before. These are molecules people hadn't thought of before in that way. And so many uses for it and such a demand for that kind of research and science to quickly come up with solutions to the biggest problems that everyone is looking for an answer to. So this is going to completely transform the whole biotech pharmaceutical industry for sure. It takes right now, you know, a couple billion dollars in about 10 years to get a drug approved, to take it from lab to patient, you know, a lot of them end in failure, most of them, the vast majority of them. If you could reduce that time from 10 years, which let's say getting rid of animal testing, you know, and actually you, if you get rid of, you shrink that time. What happens is you see an explosion of new treatments because that excess cash gets invested in other areas instead of one drug that takes 10 years. Yeah, such a great point uh, and a huge revolution of how AI is impacting healthcare. This last stock on your list is hmm. also really interesting because it's another way that AI is kind of transforming not just biotech and pharmaceuticals, but really healthcare in general. Yeah, and this is Hims. You know, famously, everybody's talking about Hims. What an exciting company. Now, you know, uh, RFK and Dr. Oz are talking about, you know, AI and biotech, but, you know, they're also talking about transforming how uh, people are treated, diseases are treated, you know, and, and Hims is a telehealth company, you know, very much like a Netflix. It's a one-to-one company. It's a platform company. You know, they, they very much like this, uh, somebody like me, a patient sits with somebody like you, a doctor, and I tell you my problems and you prescribe or you, you know, you give me your advice. It's, 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 it's fascinating. They just came out with numbers and I mean, they're just killing it. I mean, the stock is trading, uh, you know, right around 60 bucks a share. And, you know, revenue doubled to, to 585 million. Profits were 50 million. Subscriber growth was up 38% to 2.4 million. And most importantly, their average revenue per subscriber jumped from 55 to $84 per person. So they've got 2.8 million people paying $84 a month for access to this. I mean, it's Netflix on steroids when you think of this average revenue. So, you know, that is a very, very interesting company to me. And you have a situation where 30% short position on it. So 30% of their stock is short. So you have the potential for a massive short squeeze here. And, uh, you know, that's very, very interesting to me. Uh, And finally, they just, um, there was some trouble, there was some debate whether a lot of their growth has come from these GLP-1 drugs, these uh, Ozempic type drugs, these weight loss drugs. A lot of, they just cut a deal with Novo Nordisk that really, uh, where they're able to sell Novo's drugs right there on Hims. So that big overhang that was keeping the stock suppressed has disappeared. And it looks strong on a trade. In the longer term, we'll see. I mean, they've got a lot of people running and nipping at their heels. But these guys, I'll tell you, they know how to run a business. The really interesting number to me that you just shared, Dylan, is the look at the people who are already using it are using it more. So that means customers are very satisfied with the, the product and what they've created. And that's always a good sign yeah, for long term growth for the company. Um, I do think that uh, what else you pointed out is a good thing to talk about, not just with HIMS, but all of these biotech so- stocks in this sector as a whole. And that's volatility. HIMS has yeah. seen quite a few up and downs oh, yeah. this year. <laughs> Um, what should investors expect if you are investing in biotech? Is it just normal to see this kind of volatility? 
Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, for, for HIMSS is a little bit different. We'll call it a health company. But yeah, it is normal to see this kind of volatility. That's how you see gains like this. You know, we've averaged, if I check Insider, we've averaged, uh, you know, 66% average gains for the past seven years. You don't get that with a lot of volatility. We've had tough times where we've looked, you know, I've, I've joked with my subscribers like, yeah, don't even look at the portfolio today. So I say to people, look, you got to, you, you don't put your, I'm going to retire on this money away. This is your, your fun. This is something you, you're not, you know, the, if you're, if this is for your, then you don't put your income in here. Okay. Your income m money investment here, you got to buckle up for a wild ride, but if you're going to go on that kind of wild ride, these are great stocks to do that with. I mean, Hims, great business summit just came out with a key true to alternative for the first time in years. Schrodinger, Bill Gates, changing the world, back company, RFK Jr. Recursion, NVIDIA just bought a bunch. Of, I mean, these are the stocks you take those shots with. You do If you're going to make bets, you're going to make them smart. These are smart ways to make bets in this area. Amazing advice for investors today. Dylan, thank you so much for bringing these companies to our attention and sharing them with our viewers. You can, again, check the link in the comment to get more of Dylan's information and his insights on his own newsletter. We have that for you in the comments. Thanks again, Dylan, and thank you for joining us. Let us know what you think about these companies in the comments. We'd love to hear from you too. As always, happy investing, everyone.